When were you the bad guy in someone else's life story? I saw an open spot at a very crowded bar and thought sweet. I went to go order and I right when I got the bartender's attention I heard excuse me. I looked down and I was leaning over the head of a guy in a wheelchair. Hence the open space at the bar. Drunk me didn't put it together and said hey, what's up then put my order in. When I sobered I realized what a horrible thing it done. My heart is pointing typing this up. That is dreadful, but hilarious. Holy crap. Reminds me of recently in work. I was serving a customer, and he said to me I'm actually deaf and without even thinking I went straight into a customer is telling me something mode and just said oh lovely. I wanted to die afterwards. We can be evil together. I was going on a date after a big rain. As we were driving, I didn't notice a pretty big puddle and drove through it kind of fast. It created a huge tidal wave that hit all the people standing at a bus stop. Unforgivable tbh. A year ago today I was interviewing for a job. I was in the lobby making small talk with the receptionist. It was her birthday and also happened to be my friend's birthday. She told me what she was doing for her day. I don't remember exactly, but her bf was taking her to dinner. I piped in with, my friend's husband is taking her to the beach for the weekend. Huge mistake. I immediately noticed a change in her posture. She hated me instantly. She has hated me ever since. I have always been nice to her and have no idea how to change the situation. Wish I could. I get that I was an unintentional one-upper at that moment. Heck, I've always even been avoiding anything that might seem ragged to cheers around her. TL. Doctor, I was the devil for a day, one year ago today. Been paying for it since. That says more about her than it does about you. You just said something without quite thinking it through first. It can happen to anyone. She has issues if she's still salty about it and is being extremely unprofessional. I once broke my friend's neck playing recess football. It was a complete accident and I felt horrible. But that didn't help him not have to wear a neck brace and sleep in an upright position for 2 months. That's how I remember it anyway. It was a long time ago. I definitely thought that this was going to end much much worse. Hugh. I work in local print news. In 2016 Hurricane Matthew hit us and about a week later the river that runs through our county started flooding. It took several days but I think it ultimately crested at 28 feet. All told, from the day the storm hit us till the day the water receded and roads opened back up the whole experience lasted about a month. That's a month of not getting much sleep, working 6 days a week, working some on your day off. Not having much to eat because trucks can't get to your grocery stores and I was of the mind it'll never hit us. So I never went to stock up beforehand. Anyway, in the middle of all this I was out in a neighborhood that was half flooded. Like everyone on the left side of the street was mostly dry. Maybe some water in the yard or driveway. Everyone on the other side had their car completely underwater. I met this gentleman who had come back to check on his house with his wife. They had no power. But they were dry and happy about it. While I interviewed him he mentioned that he was in no rush to leave again. He'd been staying with his mother-in-law and she was driving him insane. I quoted him on that. Even mentioning that he was joking when he said it. Cause he was. I thought it was a nice moment of levity in what was otherwise kind of a bleak situation. His mother-in-law did not agree. He called me the next day and was clearly trying to dig his way out of the doghouse for that remark. I got an earful. Probably deserved it. When we later made a special edition with all of our stories and pictures from the flood, we took that line out of the story as a favor for him. Sorry my dude. Yesterday I acted as a jury in a school chess competition, and I bet many children are angry at me for some calls I made. I reported a former friend to social services for neglecting her toddler. I knew she was having a hard time. She was a single teen mother. But she shouted at her son a lot. However alarm bells really started ringing after I turned up at her place one morning. The kid was wandering about alone in a room full of broken booze bottles. Rotten food. Overfilling ashtrays. Dozens of filled diapers. She was nowhere to be seen. And it later became apparent that she was in her bedroom with some random guy. The kid was filthy and his diaper was falling off of him it was so full. So I went to change him and he was red raw. Even though she knew I was there. She didn't appear. 
So, I cleaned the room to make it safe and played with him until she finally got up. Then I took my leave and got straight in contact with the right people. I later found out the kid was placed with his father and grandmother. I probably really messed up her life but I have no regrets. You're a good person for helping that little baby out. I went to a show by Sami Mo cover band. I ended up at the front by the stage. Talk danced with this pretty cute girl who popped up next to me. After a while I decide to ask for her number. I give her my phone and as this happens a guy comes from the crowd with a drink for her. I find out shortly after that he invited her to this show, but she didn't realize it was meant as a date. She takes the drink then gives me her number right in front of the guy pretty much ignoring him, and in that moment I am become Chad, destroyer of beaters. We go somewhere quieter in the venue and flirt for a bit. I feel bad for the dude having been in that situation before, and tell her she should clarify that she's not interested. They go off and have an uncomfortable conversation which is probably for the best as she said she was never going to be into him. But yeah he probably sees me as the bad guy and I don't blame him. It's hard to say no to the lord of fire and master craftsman. Local politician reneged on a promise he made me. I got mad so I started plotting to throw him off the board he was on. It took me about a year but I successfully isolated him and removed him from power. He didn't even see it coming. He was too busy laying the groundwork for run for mayor. It's been 4 years and he still won't look at me in the supermarket. Probably when I broke up with my girlfriend that I started dating in high school. We had made some plans about me going into the military or joining the police force so I could provide for us once we got married. Then I was like yeah no I don't want to do any of that. I'm 19 inches and I left. She was pregnant by another man less than a year later. Reminds me of my friend. He and his girlfriend were like an old married couple in college, then she dumped him right before senior year. He was engaged to another girl before graduation, and proceeded to have a kid every year for 3 years. I think he panicked when she left him, because he had his whole life planned out and he felt he needed to find a wife in college. It happened in 5th grade and it still makes me feel bad. I had become rather popular in school. I had a group of friends and most of the other boys wanted to be in our circle. There was this other kid named Trevor. He kept trying to be friends with us and hang around with us. He wasn't that bad but he just didn't know how to react to things. He always was over the top or super talkative when something happened. I finally got tired of him and said something along the lines of, Hey, duh, no one wants you around. It was during some event and most of the grade heard it and he pretty much got shunned. We ended up moving an hour away from my dad's work before the end of the year. I still feel terrible about it. I never really found out what happened to him. I am not sure if I made him an outcast for more than that year. But I did at least make him an outcast for a few months. I just didn't want him bothering us but I took it too far. I was a bad guy that day. I've gone out of my way several times since then to try to make up for it. Even if it doesn't have a huge impact. I am sorry Trevor. Back when I was 20, almost 2 decades ago, I started fooling around with a girl who'd been my friend for a few years. We started hanging out a ton and sleeping together for a brief period. Eventually she confessed feelings for me and I told her that they weren't reciprocated. I tried to be gentle, but in retrospect, I was a dong about it, and that I wasn't interested in a relationship. She ended up transferring schools and moving across the country. We didn't speak much after that and I quickly moved on with my life and essentially forgot about her. A dozen years later we reconnect on social media and after chatting for a bit I discovered that I had essentially wrecked her. She had been in love with me and had figured I was the one. My rejection sent her into a tailspin and she transferred schools because her grades had dropped off a cliff once I shot her down. I apparently ruined certain foods and songs for her for years as they were things she associated with me. Things which I sadly don't even recall. Even her new friends knew about and loathed me sight unseen. I was the fabled Minotaur 11 who had broken her and who all subsequent men were compared against. Eventually she got over it and is now happily married with a family, but it really shocked me to think I'd basically been a wrecking ball that had smashed through her life and it had taken her a good 5 to 7 years to out the pieces back together. Especially when, at the time, I was just a stupid young guy having fun and hardly remembered what we did together once she left. 
breaking up with my girlfriend two weeks ago. I know I'm the bad guy and probably always will be in her eyes and in the eyes of her family and friends. But no matter how many ways I slice it, I know I did the right thing for both of us. You're the bad guy for the moment. They'll all get over it. You'll get over it. You know you did the right thing. It'll all work out. Although we went to different universities I had the same best friend from high school. He was the opposite sex and had a thing for me since about 8th grade but I never reciprocated. I may have unintentionally led him on for a while but when he bluntly asked I bluntly said no. Friendship moves on. I had become really close friends with a girl at my uni and introduced the two of them. They got together and everyone was happy. I moved into a house with a girl. They continued dating. My selfishness and poor attitude towards their relationship strained both friendships. Although, to be fair. She wasn't being as kind to me as she could have and of course as her boyfriend he took her side. I wanted all of my friendships to stay the same, with me being the center of attention, and they wanted their romantic relationship to blossom. They eventually move in together and I saw less and less of them. I chalked it up to her being jealous that he used to be into me and that she was afraid he'd leave her for me because I am more attractive. In reality, I was being a selfish stuck up bee who put myself first and didn't pull my own head out of my butt to see I wasn't putting forth any effort in keeping the friendships alive. They got married and I was thankfully invited but never saw or heard from them again. I have done a lot of growing up and maturing and would love the chance to apologize and make amends. Alas, this won't happen and I am sad to say I ruined two of my most cherished friendships because I was being stuck up and self involved. Some guy who was in love with one of my exes. He was the typical nice guy I am just her friend. Met her while he was there with her at a party. We hit it off and dated for like 4 months. I broke it off as I told her I didn't want anyone that was thinking of even getting married. She ended up with some piece of crap ex and he the best friend called me that I ruined his life that he was so close to getting with her but her lust for me ruined that. I told him to meet me for dinner and tried to explain the friend zone. He brushed me off. Saw her years later. I asked about him just cause I am a nosy rat. Said he finally convinced her to give him a shot. And a two months after dating he proposed to her she said no and he went stalker. That's our Nisego eyes. Last year I backed out of my childhood friend's wedding. I was ma because she was expecting her bridal party to spend a small fortune on her elopement. With us buying our own dresses, jewelry, paying our way to where she was getting married, 8 hour drive for us because flying would have been double the price, splitting the cost of the lodge she wanted us all to stay at, going out for a wedding brunch after the ceremony, and going to a spa the day before the wedding I was looking at spending easily 2k USD. I tried to rationalize with her after she brought up brunch in the spa. I told her we were going to be in this gorgeous lodge with a giant kitchen so I offered the idea of us cooking for the newlyweds so it would be a more intimate and special meal post wedding. She straight up turned Bridazilla, said most of the people going, i.e. just the bridesmaids and groomsmen, weren't adventurous eaters, why go out to eat then when you don't know the restaurant menu, and she's the bride, so we're doing this. Nope the frick out of that and she hasn't spoken to me since and I'm sure I'm the butthole in her story but whatever. Saved a crap ton of money. IDK how I'd be comfortable with making people spend that much money for my comfort. My favorite is this guy in college. He would slack off on every project until the afternoon before it was due and then come to my group of friends expecting us to show him everything we did. We were in a computer science course. One day I was the only one around. We had three projects due the next day and I was busy with the last one still. He came expecting me to help him and tell him everything I did. I didn't have time to help him and told him this and that he should have started earlier as we all had been warning him to do for the last two weeks as these were not simple projects. He ended up failing those three courses and talks to everyone in the group still minus me. Apparently he hates and blames me. I don't really care as people like him have a garbage attitude regarding the world and don't see they are the issue. Either way I think it's funny and still laugh about it with those friends whenever he comes up. When I pursued my ex who had a girlfriend because he led me to believe that he was breaking up with her and was sexting me. He ended up not breaking up with her and when word got out about me and him. He told everyone that I was crazy and obsessed with him and trying to sabotage his relationship. 
making no mention of the fact that he was the one who was trying to sext Emmy. So I guess I'm the crazy ex-girlfriend in his narrative, and his current girlfriends. In Mexico, I was on the beach and see a ball come flying at me. I thought I saw one of the kids in the ocean yelling at me to kick it back. I blasted that ball warre into the ocean, overshooting the kid who asked for it. Turns out it was someone else's ball, who was actually on the beach. It literally looked like I picked up their ball and just kicked it away into the ocean. The look on their faces said it all. As a retail wage slave, I used my technopathic powers to prevent a mother from buying expensive Christmas presents for her kids by repeatedly making her car decline. As the Christmas ruinator, I have decided to embark on a quest for world domination and may soon be in your city spreading Christmas sadness. This would make a freaking awesome Christmas special. I sent a Christmas card to a guy who had a crush on me when we were in high school together. When I sent the card I was still in school and he was in the marines, stationed somewhere near the Mexican border. I hadn't heard from him in a while and just wanted him to know that I still thought about him and I wished him well. It turns out he was in a pretty intense relationship with a woman out there who had found some letters and notes and whatnot of mine that he had kept and she was pee about it. He had to explain that nothing really happened between us. He was with her now. He had no feelings for me anymore, etc. And she accepted it. So here comes my Christmas card a few months later and she was not happy to say the least. I wasn't exactly sure why she thought some 15 year old girl who lived almost 3000 miles away was a serious threat to her relationship. But apparently she hated my guts. I was the home wrecker that was going to take her man away and I didn't even know she existed. I have no idea if they're still together. He got in contact with me after the Christmas card episode just to let me know why he had gone radio silence for so long. The last thing I heard, they were trying to get pregnant. That was probably 20 years ago. I recently tried to find him on FB and it looks like he's married with kids. I did not try to friend him. We hired a guy for my department at work. Turns out he has no driver's license and has to ride his bike to and from work every day. In the summer this was no big deal but not so much when winter comes. Then he moved to a new apartment farther away and out past where I lived. I gave him a ride home every once in a while but told him that he needed to get his license back because I would not get up earlier to drive away from work to pick him up. Winter came and he was still riding his bike and asked me for a ride in the morning. Suddenly I was the bad guy for telling him no. This is pretty minor in the grand scheme of things, but I feel so bad about it. On Monday night I was checking into a hotel and the guy at the check-in desk asked if I knew the final score of the national championship game, NCAA March Madness, Villanova Michigan. I said I don't know but that Nova won by 15 or so. He goes I don't care about that, I just want to know if they hit the 146 over. I said, quite confidently, oh yeah man. For sure, you're good. The guy looked very happy, implying he had a decent chunk of change on this. It turns out the total was 141. I'm a college admissions counselor. I get to tell a lot of prospective students and their families that they've been denied to the university. I've been doing this for years and it still gets really awkward when they cry. Made a new group of friends, starting getting friendly with one guy in particular. He'd been seeing a girl casually in the group for a couple months, but they weren't in an official relationship. He and I hit it off and he broke it off with her so we could date. We dated for 6 months before calling it quits. A while after this, I meet the girl's brother. We hit it off and dated for a year. Her brother had recently moved back to town after being away for years, and I ended up taking a lot of his time and attention away from her, just as a natural part of having a relationship. Wherever she turned, I was just this for sucking things away from her. One of my friends who I had pined after for months finally agreed to go out with me and we actually dated for a while. Broke up with him because it turned out he had no ambition or sense of urgency to do anything with his life. I sort of distanced myself from our friend group, but a year later we reconnect and go out again. Thought he was getting his life together, but turns out I was wrong so I broke up with him again. He's pretty guarded and doesn't let people in a lot, so I've always felt pretty freaking terrible for dumping him not once but twice. I imagine I'm sort of his nightmare. I can relate. My ex thought that life would just be handed to her on a platter so she didn't try. That attitude gets old quick. 
When I finally dumped my ex, he had it pretty cushy, no rent, roof over his head, food in his belly and I'm sure it felt like I was pulling the rug out from under him when I told him I was done and wanted him out of my life. Pretty sure I'm still the bad guy but he always had a tendency to blame everyone else for his problems. Right now, I'm the boss of like 35 plus people and I have to crack down on people being crappy at their jobs so I wouldn't be surprised if I fit that role in their eyes. Late in high school I started dating a girl very shortly after she had broken up with another guy. Towards the end of our relationship, she started emotionally cheating on me with her ex. Talking to him all the time, telling him she was still in love with, etc. She dumped me for him about 15 months after we started dating. I'm pretty sure I was the bad guy in the other dude's mind. Posted this before on another account, but think it applies. This is the thing I feel most guilty about in my life. My girlfriend at the time was one of the most sweet, loving people I've ever met. She took care of me in more ways I can count. Well, we started having this ongoing threesome with another girl. My GF was all for a one-time thing. But me and the other girl kept pressuring her to continue. Eventually the other girl and I started trying to pressure her into a poly relationship she never wanted. One day she came to me with a list of 25 reasons she wanted me to stop sleeping with this other girl. Handwritten. I went down the list line by line and explained why each of her reasons was wrong or stupid. We kept all playing but I was too selfish to realize how miserable she was. We finally broke up about 2 months later for that and a couple other reasons. But honestly we probably could have made it work if I hadn't gotten so hung up on that other girl. I actually still have the list almost 6 years later. Kind of to remind me to never do things like that again. It was in a box of old things I sealed for a lot of reasons. Anyway, I am going to put the list out exactly as she wrote it. In this situation, she was writing it to figure out her feelings. So she wrote it in the third person. So I will transcribe it exactly. I will edit names. But I am J and the other girl is M. What bothers me? J is more responsive during threesomes than when we are alone. J will try to compromise after I have said no to something. The threesomes mean more to J than to me. J is disappointed, upset, when I say no regardless of why. I was pushed into the situation. I didn't stop it in the beginning. I didn't really know M. It seems unfair to take a happy thing away from her. J M always want to play when we're over at her place. I have to keep saying no finding excuses. I have trouble telling the truth because I don't want to disappoint them. I have trouble telling the truth because Jay is so happy thankful. I don't want her to be frisky. I feel inferior when Jay and I are alone. I feel Jay only has sex with me to reassure me I am not inferior. Jay wants to introduce my fetishes into threesome before he has ever tried them with me. Because M likes them. Lately. Jay hasn't been telling me everything he has been thinking. I've been neglecting my own emotions to save theirs. I'm impatient with M, as I don't know everything that she's thinking feeling. I don't know how her situation relates to the threesome. I don't want this to be a coping mechanism lest it cause larger problems. I feel that Jay lets his excitement outweigh his concern for me. I feel like the killjoy, the squeaky third wheel when I am part of the twosome. I feel like I shouldn't feel like this. Well crap man, I'm not sure what to really say the list was heartbreaking. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.